Well, we, we put in a range of provisions, as you well know. We concluded, of course, that there were systemic deficiencies, and particularly we wanted to get the gatekeepers back to being gatekeepers. We thought they had slid off that standard, um, and we, we needed to, to reestablish that important role for the auditors, uh, for the lawyers, uh, for the audit committees of the board of directors, who of course now hire, fire, and compensate the auditor instead of the management doing it. The auditors, after all, are checking the performance of the management, so it seems sensible to shift it over into the, into the, audit, into the audit committee. I'm not going to go through all the provisions. I mean, you know them as well as I do, uh, but I do want to make a, a, a couple of observations. Uh, first of all, we think that I want to commend the regulatory agencies for, I think, the terrific work they've done. Uh, they had a, uh, we left a lot of discretion to the agencies. And they had a major challenge to, to put things into place. Uh, the PCAOB was created out of whole cloth. Uh, Charlie Niemeyer was its acting chairman for a while before Bill uh, McDonough came aboard. Uh, Bill Donaldson was very successful in persuading Bill McDonough to come and take on that uh, responsibility. Uh, they had to take and bring an agency up from scratch. And I think they've done a terrific job. They just issued their latest annual report of the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board, strengthening investor confidence. And by all reports, they've really, they're off to a, a, a very good start and operating at a, at a very, uh, very high, very high level. Uh, we think that the uh, provisions are working well. Uh, there are some complaints, and I'm going to address two of them very quickly in a moment. But I, Business Week not long ago said, and I quote them, despite the grumbling, there's increasing evidence that reform has been well worth the trouble. Already intense scrutiny of accounting methods and internal controls has unearthed lingering problems in the way companies operate. And fixing weak financial controls has nipped a lot of accounting problems in the bud. And a lot of businesses, to their credit, have seen it as an opportunity not as an imposition, as an opportunity to gain better control over the workings of their, of their company and to, and to move to higher standards. Now, we still have some recalcitrants who are kicking and screaming, uh, but we think that, the, that their concerns are being addressed. Many of them, of course, involve uh, the cost of Section 404, the internal uh, financial controls. I, I, I don't see how you quarrel with the concept. I mean, if someone came to you and wanted you to invest money in his company, and you said to him, well, I might be interested, how's your system of financial, internal financial controls? And he said, oh, we don't have a system like that. We don't believe in that. We think it's oppressive. It's a burden, and we don't want to go through the expense. I doubt, I doubt you would invest your money in his company. So the whole question is a, is a matter of, uh, of balance. I mean, how we work that through uh, Chris Cox, and I, th I thought in a very um, perceptive statement, said we don't need to change the law. We need to change the way the law is implemented. It is the implementation of the law that has caused the excessive burden, not the law itself. 